Hey guys, it's Scott. Uh, I had a couple videos I had already of my refugiums that I built uh, out of plastic. And uh, so I'm just doing an update. Let me start off by saying that one, I replaced uh, one of them already with a glass one that I custom built myself. It's quarter inch panes. Uh, I think I screwed up when I built this one because, as I learned the hard way, you can't drill into tempered glass. It just completely shatters. It's safety glass. Um, when I originally ordered this, all the pieces were tempered. Uh, what happened is the ones with the bulkheads uh, going from unit to unit, uh, I reordered as annealed, which means you can go ahead and drill through them. Uh, and I drilled the two, as you can see, the bulkheads that connect. I drilled the two, uh, and of course they didn't shatter. Um, the downside of this is, and I don't know what would happen because you can see this thing's completely closed up, but if something were to hit uh, the sides of this hard enough, it would completely shatter. Now, I don't know if that's for better or for worse. I mean, obviously you don't want a shard of glass coming out at you, but I don't need about 10 gallons of water rushing out uh, absolutely for no reason whatsoever. Anyways, I built this one. Uh, I replaced the unit that looked like this. It was plastic, um, kind of put together some bolts, nuts. You can see it in the older video. Um, so here's what happened. Uh, the filters in this, I have some filter units in here. Uh, the filter units became at some point clogged. You can see some of the filtration in there. Uh, clogged. And um, they actually went and the water pressure uh, was great enough that it went around the sides. And I'll show you up close here what I mean. You can actually see here is one of the baffles with the epoxy. Uh, you can see some of the plant. They're going behind it. Uh, I'm not going to push too hard on this because I'm actually replacing this today. Um, now here's a cool thing. The plastic I thought might have a negative impact on some of the life. My Ever since I've thrown these refugiums in, my water quality has gotten so great that I'm getting all kinds of life growing in my tank. Oh, these, these cool little white snails. I have baby little white ones and now I have these guys with a half shell. They're amazing and they've been breeding like crazy. Um, Everything's been doing really well. I thought there was going to be a leach of plastic into the water. That hasn't happened, at least not to levels that have screwed with um, the life in the tank. Uh, here's a little worm, dude. Anyways, the life, I put one rock in here, small rock, and apparently had enough life on it. Everything's been going bonkers. Two different layers of sand. Um, so, all right, long story short, uh, all the seals have broke. The only thing keeping it together is I bolted these guys somewhat together now if i was to do this again and i don't know if this would be good or bad these are only bolted to the plastic pieces these little triangles inside that are glued together more or less to these acrylic paints they have a hole i could have bolted them through that would have gave it so much more structure i just you know it's, it's a long story short um if it's your first time building a refugium I would totally recommend, if you have some money and patience, do one of these guys. You'll get a really good feel for what you want to do. Because once you do this, and this thing was like 20 bucks with maybe another 30, 40 bucks in panels. I mean, it was cheap. This guy is at least $140 in custom cut glass. It's quarter inch, it's annealed. Uh, I actually this is my second shot at it because this one leaked um the bottom panel was off just enough i actually bought a l to get perfect 90 degree angles on everything this one came out really well this one i got lucky on the first time i did it uh just came out wonderfully so i decided um this one's bowing and it's you can kind of see it but it's bowing out and if i push on this a little bit uh, there's a good inch almost into the the panel and you can see all the glue and stuff so today i'm um, taking this bad boy out i'm gonna go in i'm gonna grab all these snails i'm gonna move them up into the display to munch on algae i'm gonna take the sand and the the uh seaweed seaweeds and rock throw them in here in uh heated water bath while i change everything out uh this bad boy is gonna go in um inlet over under refugium with the the seaweed over under boom out and again i threw on some custom 
filters on here to keep uh, the seaweed or anything going through the bulkhead uh, piping. Um, so, if you got the time and the patience, there's nothing wrong with doing this. Just be aware there's no way to effectively bond this miscellaneous kind of plastic to acrylic. Not effectively. And my fear is if I would have actually bolted this together tightly like I told you, um, I'm almost guessing it might have torn at the plastic. This plastic, as you can see, I think this is the thickness of it right here. Um, it's like, it's thin. Uh, and as this has gone on and this is bowed out, even with the reinforcement, um, I've been very concerned that this is going to tear at some point. Hence, I've been busting my butt to get this one done. Now, uh, let me also say uh, the straps. Looked like a really good idea when I put them in. They have provided a tremendous amount of support. As you can see, they're leaching salt. Uh, I've been having to constantly update my magnesium, uh, my um, acid buffer, and my salt, uh, my salinity, because it's, and now it's not leaching out super fast, but as you can see, it is leaching out. Um, I did a really good job epoxying these bolts in. I've had no rust issues. The last one I took apart when I was done with it, uh, I didn't have any rust issues on the bolts. So this has been going really well, guys. I gotta tell you. And again, the amount of life growing in here uh, has been fantastic. It's really been a testament to once I put this refugium setup in, um, how well it has addressed the quality of life. Now, on top of it, I do have a nice algae issue going on up here um, from the initial algae dosing that I added to the refugium. But I have these feather dusters, and I gotta tell you, I don't feed them. They eat off the particulate matter in the tank. Normally, they only stay around for a week or two. I've had these guys for like two solid months, and they've done nothing but try to reproduce as much as possible because uh, they're digging it. So, um, I did have a, I will warn you about one thing. Uh, and this is my my stupidness. When I built this, I ordered some seaweed from um, the uh, Gulf Coast. And as soon as I put it in, within about two weeks, um, I had an ick infestation. It took out half my tank. I got really lucky that uh, I was able to, through God's help, I'm going to say, uh, have it stop. The, re the remaining fish, the ones that died were those nice soft side fish like my blue hippo. Um, I had a flame angel. I had some really cool fish. I must have lost three, four hundred dollars in fish. The ones that are left are my chromies and my clownfish who picked up the habit of acting dead from the blue hippo. Um, and I got a, uh, I think it's a goby. They've all survived. They all had slight ick infestations. I fed them um, some of this ick shield and uh, life is good. Uh, I really didn't want to put copper in my tank because I have such a cool uh, growth of different kinds of snails and inver other invertebrae um, that it's just, it would have killed everything. So I got really lucky, guys. I can't stress enough what they say on the uh, um, forums that you really should have a isolation tank for about a month for anything new. I was dumb, didn't even think about it, new to the game, and the joys of this. And this thing, I gotta tell you what, I forget what they call it, uh, the type of seaweed. You can go ahead and look it up online. Um, I empty this thing out every two weeks, just a huge pile of it, um, which is a testament to how much uh, of the gunk it pulls out into plant form. Now, apparently you gotta be really careful with this type of seaweed because it can all of a sudden have a mass die off and it has a toxin in it and it can really screw with your tank. But I've been really fortunate and I had no, no real issues. So, um, pretty much uh, inlet. I think I'm gonna put a glass cover on my new one with a bulkhead and it's gonna feed so it's gonna be completely covered. I've had problems with evaporation. I fill this guy up about once every three to four weeks. Uh, it is winter time so the furnace and everything's running. And then I have an automatic top off sensor and I have a pump shut off valve in here. Um, but as you can see the condensation, it has been evaporating water rather quickly. Uh, it hasn't been a terrible thing. Um, the panels on top, the acrylic panels, have really helped. 
uh, I want to throw, but they're not airtight by any means. They're good, but they're not airtight. Um, and I do want some air exchange, though I have that going on. Uh, I'm going to, I think about putting a complete glass one on here with a bulkhead drill uh, hole drilled in there. And um, it should be good. Uh, let's see. There's a heater in there. There was an air pump that's running very light. I do have a circulation pump in here because uh, with the new seaweed, I got some cyan bacteria. It's not terrible uh but i have really good flow in my tank um which my fish seem to like and the uh, feather dusters don't mind and it really keeps it at bay i've had terrible outbreaks before when i didn't have flow um second stage air filter some bio balls which actually have stuff growing in them now uh really you can see these little white polyp guys that i think are filter feeders uh, my only regret is i'm having a hard time figuring out how to clean the the gunk out of here but it's not terrible um Anyways, protein skimmer that used to be on the back, I modified it to go in here. Uh, another set of filtration in the pump. Um, this thing's been great. I really dig this glass guy. Uh, oh, here's another thing. If you're dealing with a cabinet, and I can't stress this enough, guys. Um, I went through about two or three of these to figure out what I could fit in here. It was a pain. I had to turn it sideways, do all kinds of crazy crap, throw in this crazy dual pipe PVC... Uh, I wanted to do it with one tank, end up doing it with two, which I like, because uh, it gives me so much more volume of water to work with. Um, now, when you get comfortable with that and you're ready to go to the next stage, because this is a poor man's, though it worked great, I got to tell you. Um, make sure, this is a lot of money, man. Make sure you drop the dimensions down a couple of inches, just to make sure when you go to fit it in, it fits in properly, because I dropped this down by about an inch on each side, I had a really hard time getting it in um, because these are bowed in. These are straight down. It it was a trick, but as you can see, I got it in there. Um, and they're heavy, so it's a lot more work. Uh, again, these are really cool if you can pull it off. Um, I suggest if you're going to do the epoxy, get the plastic to plastic type epoxy. Don't worry about the aquarium stuff. As long as it cures and you rinse it out before you put it in, it should be fine. I've had no issues. The fish have had no issues. Um, again, I did have some stress on my fish because this stuff was leaching out so bad. I felt like I was constantly hitting it with magnesium to try and get the alkalinity and, uh, uh, city levels down pat. Um, but hey, oh, there's Rocky. Yeah, what's up, buddy? Yeah, I, w I thought he was going to die too. But what's cool is, uh, with the ick, he doesn't stay in one place. He's got his little holes, but he's got like nine of them. Um, so the ick like to fall off and then reattach to the fish at night in that particular area. Because he moved around, I got really lucky and that stuff died off. I thought I was going to lose all my fish. I was so heartbroken. It was awful. Um, I lost some really cool fish. Uh, anyways, hey, that's it. I just want to follow up. Um, summary. If you want to do the plastic, great. Just be aware it can't be a long-term solution. Um... This thing, eventually, I will tell you, it, it, it's been solid. I would not, I, I, I don't trust it enough to leave it for too much longer, especially once I saw the Boeing, which happened about a month and a half ago. Um, before then, it was solid. Everything was tight. Uh, it was a piece of cake. Another thing I find is I'm much more comfortable going in and banging around and stuff with the glass than this. Again, I'm worried. It's so thin. I'm worried about it tearing. If it tears, man, you're done. And I, so that's that. Uh, hey, guys, I really hope this video has helped everybody. If you need any more uh, direction or any feedback or stuff from me, uh, thoughts, I'll be more than happy to help you. I, I, it does work. I proved it. Um, you're going to spend a little money, I think, on the acrylic panes. Uh, but again, the base setup on this thing was dirt cheap. And it's more of just going through the two days to set the acrylic, let it waterproof, water tested, etc. Um, I could have made it a little bit more stable, but I went to the next step. I said, I'm just going to make a glass one. And I'm really happy with the glass one. But again, the basic materials, just the glass alone, was about $140. Um, and I went through, I, I mean, I broke in about five or six panels. So realistically, it's probably about $200. Um, 
my son was helping me and he accidentally bumped one of the panes in and it created a crack. Uh, two of these I broke, not realizing you couldn't drill into tempered glass. They absolutely just shattered, scared the crap out of me. I almost crapped my pants everywhere. Uh, and then the first one of this stage that I built um, was I was I was doing water testing. It failed, so I had to tear it apart. Oh my god, what a pain in the butt. This was actually all glued together before. I had to tear apart and clean everything again. Um, if you're looking for how to smooth out your ends when you build these really tight areas, I used a ruler. Go in, press against it, and come up, and it creates this beautiful, nice, flat seal. It's got some extra stuff in there, but again, the seal's solid, um, so whatever. All right, guys, Godspeed, good luck. Let me know if you need any help with anything. I'd be more than happy to give you uh, pointers uh, where I bought my stuff from. Um, this has been really cool. I'm kind of a little bummed to be taking it out, and but I'm so excited to see uh, one thing. The clarity on the plastic, you can see, is not as near and clear as it will be in this guy. So I'm going to be able to see what's going on in there so much better. Um, but you still can. And I stick my head in here, and I look straight down, and life's good. All right. I end up my mumbo jumbo. You guys have a great one. Thanks for checking out my videos. Um, I'll add some more as I do more fish stuff, because I think it's absolutely fascinating. I love it. At some point, I'm going to replace this light with some LEDs. At some point, I'm going to replace this overhang with a uh, drilled hole in the back of some tank. I've scratched the hell out of this tank, so at some point, I need to either figure out how to take care of this glass, flip it upside down or something, or buy a whole new one and have at it. Guys, this is Scott. Be good. Hang tight. Happy whatever day it is. Peace.